Hi guys, so today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on my weed grinders. I have a lot of people DM me and a lot of people send me messages asking me how I get the teeth part of my grinders to be perfect with no air bubbles and no deformities and no chips. Um, I'm going to be using my new weed grinder today. Um, this mold is a little bit bigger than the current one that I already have. Um, the current one that I have is about two inches and this guy is about three inches wide. I'm not sure if I'm going to be replacing my current weed grinder or if I'm just going to be offering both sizes. So um, today you're obviously going to need your mold. And I'm going to be using these magnets. And like I said, they go right in that hole. And these are teeny tiny magnets, but they're pretty strong. As you'll be able to see once I put them in my glove. They kind of go right together. And you just put them in that center hole there. And it helps keep the grinder together. I'll also be using this dotting tool. It's got tiny little metal balls on each end and I use those to go into each tooth hole to pull the air bubbles out while I'm pouring. I'm gonna use a silicone stick. Um, I prefer using silicone sticks over wooden sticks. Wood is very porous and it attracts air bubbles. So when you're using wood to mix, it, um, it just brings more air bubbles into your resin mix. You need a, um, a cup to stir and measure. And I'm going to be using my favorite alcohol inks today. They're by Ranger Inks. And I'm going to be using this Gumball or Fiesta Magenta, this Cobalt Blue, and this Boysenberry Purple. And I'm going to be using my absolute favorite resin today is Paduo. Um, Paduo is crystal clear and it's amazing stuff. Crystal clear, it's self-leveling, it resists yellowing, it's got a 40 minute work time which is great because this does take a few minutes. It's not flammable and it's got low VOCs and low, and low odor or no odor. So I'm going to go ahead and get my resin poured into the cup and then we'll be back. So I have my part A and my part B in the cup and I'm going to use my silicone stick and I'm going to stir until that mixture is clear, until you see no more streaks. And I'm a pretty vigorous mixer, but I'm going to speed this up here just for time's sake. And when you're mixing, you're going to want to scrape the sides. You're going to want to scrape your silicone stick off, um, get all that resin off of there. And just like I said, mix until that mixture is clear. And when you're done, you may have a few bubbles in there, but I'm going to set this mixture aside and I'm going to let those air bubbles rise naturally and pop naturally, and then we'll be back. All right, guys, so it's been a couple of minutes. And as you can see, when you look in that cup, that resin is crystal clear. There are a few tiny bubbles around the edge, but I'm gonna transfer this resin from this cup into a cup that has a pouring spout. I like to use a pouring spout just because it's easier and it's less of a mess when I'm pouring my resin. So I'm just gonna pour that in the cup and I'm pouring just enough for me to cover the top of the inside of the mold um, where those teeth holes are gonna go. So some people like to put magnets into their um, grinder molds. Some people don't, but some people like to put them in after they poured the resin. I like to put them in before, that way I don't add any um, extra bubbles. And I like to mark my magnets just because that way I know that's the way they're supposed to stick together and I don't get them wrong because there's nothing crappier than putting your magnet into the mold the wrong way and then your grinder not sticking together with the magnets when you demold it. And I'm just going to use a silicone coated stick and I'm going to make sure that magnet is laying in there flat and it's the right way. And I'm going to add that magnet to the second half of the mold. Making sure that it's laying flat so it doesn't come up and um, catch an air bubble underneath it. Then 
And then I'm just gonna pour a very thin layer of resin to cover those holes where the grinder teeth go. Just enough to fill the holes when I start to work with my dotting tool. If you put too much resin in there, I find that working with the dotting tool and you know moving the dotting tool around in the mold, if there's too much resin in there, it causes an overspill and I just don't like to waste resin at all. So once I've poured the resin, I'm gonna squish the size of the mold because what that does is it pushes the air up out of the grinder teeth holes and it kind of pulls that resin down into those teeth into the teeth area. And then I'm just gonna use that end of my dotting tool and I'm going to work that into every one of the holes in the bottom of the mold. And I kind of just put it down there and then pull those air bubbles up. And but I go back and forth with using this and a heat gun. I do not recommend using a torch because this is such a thin layer of resin. If you torch it, it's so aggressive with heat that it ca can cause an exothermic reaction, which can cause your resin to fuse to the silicone, messing up your mold and messing up the um, resin piece itself. And I just go back and forth with that heat gun and that tool until all those air bubbles are out. And then comes my favorite part, my alcohol ink drop. And I did this and I let it cure and then I added a clear layer of resin with a little bit of glitter in, in it. And I let that cure and then we're gonna be ready for that demolding. Okay. So time to take them out and check my results. And look at that, perfect teeth. No chips, no bubbles, Perfect. Let's check this one. And yes, same results. No air bubbles, no missing pieces, perfectly intact. And that's how you do it.